All right, good morning. Uh, before we start, Ariel asked a very good question, which I think is worthy of recognition. No, they are not. About this week's parasha. This week's parasha that just passed. It starts off Chaye Sarah. This is the life of Sarah. And Rashi tells us why does it end Sarah's life now? Why is the, this parasha close? to the parasha of Yitzchak passing, uh, almost being sacrificed. Says Rashi, based on a Talmudic Midrash, that when Sarah heard that her son was going to be slaughtered, Parchanish Mata, her soul left her body out of shock, out of surprise, and she passed away. Different commentaries say if that was the Satan, so to speak, who went and told. Ah, I don't know that it has to be that. She woke up in the morning, her husband left early, or he left very early in the morning. And so was, oh, you know where he took your son? He took him to go kill him. And she got surprised, and she died. Now, this is one opinion of the rabbis. It's not the opinion of why Sarah passed away. Yeah. You should know, most Midrashim are not the opinion. They are one of the opinions of what happened in the story. But assuming that this opinion is the more traditional version of the story, okay. So you learn from here a few things. There's a halakha. If you open up Shulchan Aruch, in the second volume of Shulchan Aruch, in Yoreda, Maran writes that if someone passes away, you are not allowed to tell a person that someone passed away. You are not allowed to be the bringer of bad news. I did that once and it was a terrible mistake. Right. Says Shukhan Aruch that somebody who knows bad news, let's say someone passes away, and then you go and tell somebody, call him Rabbi Salas, anyone who brings bad news, it's exactly what it says in the Pasuk, Motsi Diba, he who brings bad things, Huksil, is an idiot, is a stupid person. You're not allowed to say. But how do you find out? Yeah, yeah, thank you. You always do, trust me. You're not the. You're going to be one of the few people who are not going to tell. Everyone else is going to die. You don't have to be the one to do it. I disagree with that totally. That's okay. I was laying chops. Boy, did I go all the time? Uh, if you have somebody, God forbid, God forbid. I mean, in your in your close, and you want people to know. How do you? Why? Cross Why? I want to Why? I want Why do you want them to know? You don't want them to know. Why do you want them to know? I want to make had, uh, arrangements to go to the next so right I was had, well, I was having coffee. You have to and, tell. And, um, and I said, you have so, to so how is your husband? He said, he died. <gasps> right, I, I said, horrible. I'm sorry, I had no idea. If somebody would have told me, I would have called her or yeah. sent a card. But, I mean, it's just like, Okay, what why? Do you, say? <laughs> you have to tell. I like this smile. Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah, I like this smile. I like this smile. Oh my God! 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 Oh my God
but no, that made sense when you told us the truth. It made sense. We had a story recently in Israel. And we're all still lighting Shabbat candles. There's a famous <laughs> rabbi who lives in Bnei Brak. You may know his name, Rabbi Chaim. Kanievsky. Kanievsky. Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky. Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky was married to the daughter of another famous rabbi. You want to read the book, Rebetzin Kanievsky? No. No? So you should read it. I heard it's a good book. Art Scroll put it out. It's all about the life of Rebetzin Kanievsky. She passed away last year, two years ago. Yeah. Rebetzin Kanievsky was the daughter of Rabbi Eliashev. Yeah. Rabbi Eliashev, the famous rabbi from Jerusalem. By the way, Rabbi Yashiv's wife is the daughter of another famous rabbi. Who? Rabbi Arya Levine, have you heard of him before? Yes, yes. The famous tzaddik of Jerusalem? Yes. Who was a student of Rabbi Cook. Oh, oh, just kind of but no, nobody will tell you that because it doesn't make Rabbi Levine look good. <laughs> Why? I think Rabbi Cook was a wonderful man. You do. You, yeah. I do too. <laughs> Some people. Right? Some people. They're people who like to edit our history. It works well. So... Rav Eliashev was very, very sick. He was over 100 years old when he passed away. 104? I don't remember how old he was. 103? He was the, the foremost leader of the Lithuanian Jews in Israel. Or even in the whole world. I would venture to say. Rav Eliashev, his daughter, Elisheva, Rav Kanievsky, she passed away. And Rav Chaim Kanievsky told the doctors, told his family, told the whole people of Israel on the radio, you are not allowed to tell my father-in-law. My father-in-law is not well. He's not a healthy person himself. He's been in and out of the hospital for the last year. If you tell him, he'll go into shock and he'll die. And Rav Yashiv passed away about a year later, never knowing that his daughter passed away. He never went to the funeral. He never sat shiva. He never went to the funeral. He didn't say Kaddish. Because his health was more important than knowing about his daughter passing away. Now you might say, that's a crazy story. That's a crazy story. Yeah, what, what, what's I the point of that? Like that well, before. No, this is second life. That I can understand. Save a life. I can understand that. That's a priority, isn't it? To save a life. Saving a life is a priority. Who promised you that when you tell him he's going to die? So tell him in a nice way. Don't tell him in a, in a oh, he died, she died. No, you can't tell anybody. It's fine now. It's fine now. We believe, we believe that Baruch Hashem, or not Baruch Hashem, but there are enough people who say Lashon Har. Enough people go around talking about the whole world. You don't have to be the ones to speak bad news. Somebody's going to tell them. They're going to know this is Shiva. It's going to be the nurse from the hospital is going to call. The doctor is going to call. Someone's going to call. You don't have to be the one to do it. Sometimes the results of telling someone bad news can be very devastating. Like yeah. Sarah. Sarah passes away in the Torah because somebody didn't bother to tell her. Someone told her. Someone told her her son was going to be killed and she died. And so we lost Salah. Maybe Salah would have lived for three more precious. Who knows? Somebody, uh, I heard a thing once saying that, that she died when she heard that he wasn't sacrificed and she was so... I heard someone say that also. Interesting. That, yeah. It's not what Ratchet says, but it's interesting. It's very difficult to understand which is the right way to do it. The Pelagot says that if you, don't, if you don't have the choice and you have to be the one to say it, so you have to say it. What can you do? But, that's but you have to say it. That's not Ariella's You have to say it in the no, right we way. No, we, we didn't. We'll, we'll get there. I know Ariella's question. I never, <laughs> I never go like that. <laughs> but actually, to, to, to say to what you're saying... But the Pelagot yes. says that if you have to say it, so then you have to be responsible in the way that you say it. I mean, if, if that's you're the one, you're the family member who is designated to tell Chavit, so then you have to know how to say it. Well, that's a totally different conversation. Right. Yeah. That's, that's true. <laughs> but, but, but if we believe in Olam Abba, then that shouldn't be a bad thing. Right, but natural human reaction overrides our belief. Natural human oh, wow. reaction again. <laughs> is. We're humans, right? We have feelings. We justify it all the time, and it's always in bed instead of saying the good thing. It's just like we always emphasize on the bad instead of the good. What do you mean? Why? Death is good. We go no. to Olam Abba. I have a question yeah, for you. Are your parents still alive? Sorry? Are your parents still yes, alive? Yes, both are. Well, you're very blessed. Those of us that don't have parents that are still alive, I'd like you to think back for a second. How did you find out? that your parents passed? Was it a nurse coming out of the room that yes. told you? My was it a doctor? looking at me. 
Well, everyone is different. Yeah, sure. I drove home from the hospital with my mother, and there was Bill at the front door saying, we have to go right back to the hospital, and Mom passed. I mean, everyone hears it differently. But the point that I'm getting at is the reaction, even if you know death is imminent. Yes. The reaction you feel inside of yourself. I agree. Everyone here will say. No, I agree. Has nothing to do with, well, it's death. Bye bye. No, no, I agree. And I don't care how old you are because they could well, be 110 and you always wish you had right. another day for, with them. You're right. You're right. You're right. But you're that's because I'm agree. learning now, okay, by the Lama Ba, so I'm trying to go with that, okay, that death is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. We were conditioned all those years that, ba- that death is a bad thing. But what according to Torah, according to Torah, we're going to Olam Abba and we're doing good chassidim. But the Torah still demands from you to mourn. Still demands from you to sit shiva. Still demands from you to have a 30-day period of mourning. Still demands from you for you. No, Ariel's point is right. Is in, in the ideal world. So what are you, what is, what's so sad about someone best? We'll see them soon anyway. But, but, but spoken by someone that hasn't lost... A loved one. You lose <laughs> okay. I, I mean, really, you lose, you lose your parents, and you tell me how you feel. You're an orphan. 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 Because someone has to step up and Why take the I, I would not be the person in my family. I would tell it unless I was the her. Oh, the hopefully, well, none of us will ever have to bring bad news. I mean, we're not person. going there. But why does it? I'm asking you the question. Because for I, example, Pyro, Pyro in Egypt, right? Pyro in Egypt is the one that he's he's uh, enslaving the Jewish people. But we already know that Abraham was. The, uh, God promised him, your children will be slaves in Egypt. So why is Pyro punished? All he did was carry out God's plan. Because he did it in a bad way. No. He didn't have to do it. Because he didn't have to. He should wait for the next guy to do it. Why does it have to be you? Pyro is punished because he chose to be the one to fulfill that prophecy. Why do you have to be the one to fulfill that prophecy? So maybe if you take it on yourself to know that you're, gonna, you're dealing with a person that you can say it very gently, maybe somebody else will tell him and it won't be gentle. Very nice. The Pelanets does say it. Could be, could be that you know that nobody else is going to be able to do it properly. So you're the one who has to do it. But that could be true. That's a good reason to tell somebody. But not because you just want to go around telling people that someone died. No, that's no, no. Awesome. of course no, not. No, but that's that another means. reason. Of course this not. But you also care about the next person. I mean, if, if, I'm, if, I, if, if, if it's in a family, you care about the family to not to feel, to get a chance to feel, to be together. The compassion that it comes out when somebody passes. I... When I have to send that email from the show, so and so passed away. Yeah, right. I always notice I always do it later than everyone else does. First, I see that this show sent it out, and that show sent it out, and the third one, and then I send it out. Because when I send out an email that someone passed away, the person who gets the email is now sad. I've made them have a bad day. They open up their inbox and they feel sad. So why should I? Do? I know someone else is going to do it anyways. So they'll do it. Then I'll let them know because that's my responsibility to let people. With know. all respect to you, Rabbi, I, don't have to agree I with think me. I think uh, I disagree. If God forbid anything happened to any one of us God around forbid. the table, yeah. Yeah. God forbid, poo poo poo. All right, we all know that. Yeah. I would like someone here who knew about it to call me and please let me you. know yeah, because absolutely. I will be show up. That's exactly. That's right. I need to know that. Yeah. I do want right. to know that, and that's and that's, yeah. that's right. and that is really really important. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I open up my email from Chabad. And I change my plans right then and there That's for the right. rest of that afternoon, and I go to the cemetery at three o'clock in the afternoon. And you know what? Thank God for community. And those of us that have been participated with synagogues in the past that didn't do that, you could have been a member for 37 years of a synagogue, and they didn't tell anybody. And you're wondering, well. What I pay my dues for for 37 years, I showed up on time, I thought the rabbi knew who I was, bye-bye. You know, I... Don't I, send I, that I, out I, late. You send that out quickly. I know. I know. I want to hear Lillian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If we hear Lillian, she in the beginning, she was the first one to say I'm wrong. No, because when my husband died, who else could tell my children? They weren't close, they were far away, and I had to let them know. Sure. Yeah. That's what we said. 
Do you know who asked Latino? Do you know who asked Latino? And the synagogue? And I think there's the another, another, another one. Well, let's listen to yes. Lillian. I was a member for 36 years. And when I let them know, there was no response. Really? Oh, what? what? Not even from the No rabbi? response? The rabbi left a message on my phone. Aye. Wow. Oh. That's oh. Oh. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe he believed in what oh, Rabbi no. Yomi is saying. He that would be a terrible thing. Oh. <laughs> that, I mean, it doesn't say you, it saying. doesn't say you don't go to funeral. We're not talking about that. It doesn't say you don't. It doesn't say you don't. It, you don't even know about it. It doesn't say you don't call somebody to wish them your condolences. But if you don't know about it, how do you call you them to go to the funeral? Exactly. And what if they were a well, big part of your life you and they were not even a relative? The actual wording of what he says, "Diba and Ksir." I don't know if it goes together. Okay, it's the bad news that they said the content, the ingredients of the bad news. Why it must be you. I think in the big picture, um, the compassion that of needs to come out because you feel for everybody. In, in this case, I want to say something. This morning, no, I got a message that my, one of my best friends' okay. son committed suicide. Oh. Oh. I was in oh. I was very, very, um, I mean, it really hit me. No, and she lives in Switzerland. Nobody here knows her. Nobody me doesn't mean to anybody. I needed to say it to my husband. I needed somebody to hear, to say it to that they would somehow participate. You know, give me comfort. Give you comfort. Yes. So sometimes I think you want to say it, but Absolutely. I'd like to Absolutely. know where, where every woman knows that. Absolutely. I am a woman knows that. Thank you. It's not. It, it's ingra It's ingrained in womanhood. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's how women keep their families together. It's ingrained yeah, in yeah. womanhood. Tell I'm us the source. Tell us the source. <laughs> and if there's another, it wasn't a rabbi. It wasn't a <laughs> No, it wasn't. It was a rabbi. It was a rabbi. It was. It, it, it was some intellectual thing. Yes. It didn't come anywhere. Okay, we're not going to follow you anymore. <laughs> That's, okay. That's fine. We're gonna just I just got a load off my shoulders. <laughs> On this one topic. Um, uh, what did I say? What did you say? What did you say? What did you say? Did you say? We're not gonna she was threatening me. It's okay. We're not going to follow you. <laughs> First I said, there's got to be a halakha that trumps this one. <laughs> and uh, if, if you really believe this, I want the source. And if it's, <laughs> and if it, it's not uh, Ahmed, uh, then we're not going to follow you anymore. Okay, there you go. If it's not kosher, Whoa. goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Only on this one point. <laughs> Only on this one point. <laughs> No, his his mother's gonna come soon. She's done. She's seriously. Seriously, seriously, we're being serious over here. Yes. This is not a joking matter. So what's the conclusion? So the conclusion is you don't speak. No. Everybody quiet. What if God forbid someone ends up in the hospital, had a heart attack? Yes. How would anybody know? Would you not? Would you not let anybody know? Would you wouldn't know? Maybe you don't want to know. You have something. <laughs> Maybe it's coming from you. You really, really, really don't want to deal with that. Maybe. You don't want to know. We're talking about um, we're on the rabbi. But, but I want to know. Yes, I want to know. Too. I want to know because you're my friends. That's right. And I'm there for my friends. I show up. See, Marlene sends out the emails from the class. So anyways, it would be Marlene who would be sending out an email. You didn't expect this reaction to that. Sure this is the first time I've taught this. <laughs> you know, the first. We're your test group. <laughs> Ariella, your question was about? <laughs> So I'm loving the fact that she brought the son to be sacrificed to God. Where does it say that? Um, at, the, at the small print um, under the <coughs> Rashi, maybe. An art scroll coming there? Is that what it is? The Humash. Where's the Humash? Which one? Probably she means the blue one. The blue one. Yeah, yes. the blue one. They're on that, that bookshelf facing the, the, the one on the same, on the front wall. 
Did you just bring one? Yes, <laughs> oh, but the same way. Oh, and Israel, they put the posters up on the walls to announce the Leviah. That's right. They don't tell you. It's yeah, written. It's okay. up there. You read it. So then, you read what? You Sorry, read the, 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 notices, the notifications of when a funeral is for someone in Israel. Oh, okay. On, okay, and then people the tell each other. They say, I saw this. So on this the walls of where? On the street. On the street. Well, what if you live in Tel Aviv and the funeral and, and, and the person died in Jerusalem? <laughs> Somebody slaps them up there to find them. Good news. Really? I'm sure for that. I have to go to that. I have to go to that. I have to go to that. I'm just saying, I felt yeah. I needed to. Of course. Say it's just yeah. to my husband, yeah. even though it's bad news. Yeah. Of course. Alice, what you quoted was that some commentators say, now I love our scroll because they won't tell you who those commentators are. Which is a very unprofessional thing to write. <coughs> but, but it is in the Chumash. It's an art scroll it's commentary. A, a commentary. This is not the Chumash. This is just somebody wrote it. Some commentators say that her last breath came with a proud knowledge that she had succeeded in raising a son Thanks. who was willing to give up even his life in the service of God. Willing. Yeah. It doesn't say what you said. Who was willing? It says that she has a son who was willing to give up his life for God. Not that was she was sure. proud that she had a son who was going to be killed right. for God. Okay. Which is different. It's semantics. It's a language. It's a. No, no, no. It I don't think you meant to say it. this. No. What? What? I don't know who these some commentators are, so I'm not going to stand up for them. From what I said. Because we don't. We're not proud of people who kill their kids. But if we had someone who said, "I'm going to give up my life," Al Kiddush Hashem to sanctify God's name, to 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 not compromise my values, that would be something we'd be proud of, even though it's not a good thing. It's not a happy thing. How could you be proud so of a son? She was proud. She's a mother and she was proud that she had a son. But how could you be proud of a son who is so wrong? No, what, what, what do you mean? Willing to. Willing yeah. to. What is yeah. That's not the same thing, to be Why? willing to do that. Why is it not the same thing? Because First of all, he didn't know that it was really him. He asked Abraham. He no, said, here, where we, we know. It's like, it's like knew. It's like knew he was going to be He knew that he was probably going to be it. He knew he was going to be sacrificed. There wasn't a, a question. There's no tricks here. No. So, happy for his sacrifice versus um, suicide then? Mm-hmm. Oh. Imagine that somebody, Khalila, I want a sacrifice in, in the middle of World War II, no, no. pulls out a gun and says, convert to Christianity or I'll kill you. Right. I said, no, I'm a Jew. I'm a pr- Maybe I didn't okay. go to synagogue every week. Maybe I didn't, but I'm not. Chin- and so he dies. So we're not going to be happy about those news. Mm-hmm. Right. But it, there's a lot of pride in the person who says that they're not willing to give up on what they believe. But that there's a difference between that and killing yourself. No, no, no. No, we been my so you didn't kill him. No. Yes. Didn't Here we're talking about she was happy to hear that she had a son. Right. Who, no when this. push came to shove, was willing to give up his life in order to sanctify God's name. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what she was proud of, according to these some commentators. But that's not pshat. That's not what the Chumash tells us. I don't know why it's in. Mm-hmm. Um, in general, this commentary is. Uh, so don't pay attention to those commentaries. You can you could use them when they when they give you sources and you trust their translations. When we talk about this whole story of that kedah, there's. The whole story is a strange story. The whole story... It's very strange because how did the ram all of a sudden appear? Oh, that's not the strangest part of the story. <laughs> the strangest part of the story is that in our story where we we believe in a Torah where we don't kill people, we don't sacrifice kids to God, we don't do... All of a sudden, Avram, the one who his whole life has been fighting for this cause of a sane religion and normal... All of a sudden now, God tells okay, him, so prove to me you're... you're how devout you are and go sacrifice yourself. I mean, go against everything that you've ever said until now. The whole story doesn't make sense, which is why the Rambam leads up to the story, saying that the story never happened. The Rambam believes that this entire parish is a dream. A dream? A vision, starting from Parshat Vayera. Vayera Elav, yeah. says the Rambam, they appeared to him, those angels appeared to him, says the Rambam, Vayera always means a dream. A vision. The Ram- Avram had some kind of vision. And this whole story is included in that vision. It never happened. It's a vision. The Ramban, Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman, says that's a great opinion. But you have no sources backing you up. And on top of that, 
When does the vision end? Are the Ten Commandments part of the vision? Are the Jews in Egypt part of the vision? Is Yehoshua part of the... When does the vision end? You told me Vayera means the beginning of a vision. So when does... What word means the end of a vision? And every single commentary in the Torah fights the Rambam tooth and nail over here and says, Rambam, we, we like that you're trying to bring about a new approach to the Torah, but you overstepped your bounds on this one. Actually... I think in some ways that makes more sense, the Rambam's interpretation. Although I understand you don't, it's a good question, when does the vision end? It's unprovable. But it would make more sense because, because it doesn't, that story is brilliant in that we learn about it, etc., etc., a teaching story. This is what leads but the Isaac, Rambam to say it. But Isaac, Isaac then sort of disappears from the storyline yeah, totally. until much much later we don't know and I've the read Zohar interpretation discusses that. Yeah. Yeah. okay let's say that for a moment even the Rambam who, who could have suggested this was a vision whether he believed it or not is a, he suggested this idea even the Rambam asked the same question still the vision doesn't make any sense this whole story doesn't make sense and the Rambam suggests something very interesting it goes along the old Jewish rule of we say the non-Jews, they serve falsehood with truth. You ever seen like a devout Catholic? That, that belief and that emuna that you go down, and you see a Muslim and how much they really believe. And then you see a Jew who's always trying to find loopholes. You know, ah, I can't have chametz, so I'll sell my chametz. Right? Ah, I can't do this, so I'll get around. The... Say our old rabbis had a saying that we serve truth with falsehood and they serve falsehood with truth, with sincerity. The Rambam suggests a similar idea. He says that, you know, you had all these crazy people that God is warning us of, they are sacrificing their kids to this idol and to that idol. He said, how, how crazy do you have to you, you build a God out of rocks, and then you want to worship Him by killing your child? That's a crazy thing. But the Rambam says that psychologically, this is what he writes, that it's much easier to serve something that you can see, that you can interact with, that you could touch, that you could bow down to, that you could look at, then something which you can't. Something which is more of an idea than it is something in front of you. And the Ramam says, of course I would, Avra, Hashem never had the intention for Avram to sacrifice his son. See, look at all the people that you're preaching against around you. They're all sacrificing their children to their idols because they have some deep connection with it. They're passionate. Hashem says, Avram, what about you? Do you have the same passion? Do you have the same devoutness, the same zeal, the same commitment as they do, the same dedication? Show me. And that's what the whole story was about. Never was an intention. A test is an interesting word in Nisayon, meaning try something. Try. Try to show me that you're just as devout as they are. And that's what Avram does. It's all a show to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a display that shows tremendous self-sacrifice that he knew wasn't going to end the way it was. He knew that his son wasn't going to die. Uh, nobody went up to that mountain thinking that Yitzhak was going to die. Okay, so there are commentaries who disagree. But according to the Rambam, this is what it was trying to be brought out. Obviously this goes against every ideal in Abraham's body. But that's the whole point. The point is when the Shem tells you something, do you start preaching to God about your ideals? Or do you just do? And that was the story here. Exactly that. Abraham had to go against everything that he's been knowing to be true his entire life. And that was the whole point of the story. And he, he, he was successful in this regard. But that's to answer your question? I'm sorry. No, it's a good question. <laughs>